Jan Brown will also be our guest on the next show. Well, our guest today is Chris Hillman, the leader of the Desert Rose Band. I think he knows this. I've been in awe of him for so many years. Yeah. He is such a terrific singer and songwriter and has done so much historically for music. That's true. And uh, this is the latest effort by the Desert Rose Band called Pages of Life, which is selling real well. As a matter of fact, we have a little, cl uh, little clip here from their uh, latest album. In Another Lifetime is the name. Watch. In another lifetime, in another day. If I say what's on my mind, anyway. Please say hello to Chris Hillman of the Desert Rose Band. we kissed you did not mm. make my face bleed new oh. beard oh yeah new yeah. beard have you had a lot of attention over the new look uh yeah they say you've lost a lot of weight and things oh. like that which i have but uh you see we didn't work for two months in oh. uh, november and december and i lost the razor and sort of so this, uh, this that is, rugged look this is cash right real cash yeah. well it looks good you I'm know i'm gonna lose this beard i think in a couple of days no 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 see I, I was i was curious because uh when somebody who's in the limelight like yourself an entertainer changes his appearance do you ask for advice like managers and booking agents no and record no companies? charlie <laughs> i mean seriously there are people who would do that you know there's a there's a, a a sort of a service that's popped up in the business in the last 20 years like image consultants and it scares me when somebody is an image consultant Mm -hmm. You know, because we didn't have that back in the old 60s and the birds and stuff, but uh, boy, that's scary. Somebody comes along and says, I, I think you should uh, get a mohawk and get current. And yeah. Get, uh, <laughs> no purple way. lipstick, because then everybody will, you know, do this and that. So you yeah, got to follow your heart here. So. Hey, actually, mm -hmm. uh, you were on our show earlier in the week because you were part of the uh, tribute to Roy Orbison. Yeah, Orbison's I end. sent you a personal message. Uh, oh, young lady boy. taped uh, us yeah. uh, in Los Angeles. That was Saturday night, last mm -hmm. Saturday night. I said, hi, Charlie, Lorian, but... We didn't see folks, it. Folks, they didn't show I'm gonna it. Go, I'll I, go look for it. We didn't know it was here, and we'd have shown it. Yes. I know. Yes. But we had a great time. The uh, benefit, uh, Barbara Orbison, Roy's widow, puts on for homeless people. And a lot of uh, real good stars were out there. Of course, uh, on, in country music, Emmy Lou Harrison, Ricky Skaggs, Larry Gatlin. Mm -hmm. Bunch of and, them were there. Uh, was that kind of an honor to be asked to yes, appear? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And it gives me an opportunity to play with my old friends, the Birds. So, David Crosby, Roger McGlynn. So that was fun. Speaking and we had a special guest come mm -hmm. in. Uh, Bob Dylan sat in with us and played. So oh, that wow. was real nice. Speaking of the Birds, uh, aren't you guys eligible for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year? We're eligible in 1990. Yeah. And we cross our fingers. What, yeah. Now, that has to be, if this happens, if the any, highlight if, of your if life. If there was anything I would love to get as far as an award, it would be uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. to be in something next to uh, Elvis Presley or the Everly Brothers or the Beatles or something. Right. And now with the new music, who knows, maybe the Country Music Hall of Fame in 10 right. or 15 years. Yeah. I mean, you could be a first there. Hey, you're, you're talking about your appearance uh, at the tribute to Roy Orbison, which was for the homeless. Mm -hmm. I know you guys speak out on uh, particular problems that face America, and one here, one song I want to bring up, because you, you co-wrote it with Steve Hill, and that's Darkness on the Playground. Mm -hmm. Do you try to be socially conscious with your music, or sometimes when a thought hits you, you say, well, we've got to talk about this. This deals with drugs and kids. Well, this particular time, we don't try and write s protest songs per se, but this mm -hmm. particular subject, uh, hit home. I'm a father. Uh, I have two children, uh, small children. And what we're dealing with in this song is, is drugs, anti-drug song. And it, the song Darkness on the Playground is dealing with kids and drugs in the country. Mm -hmm. And without being specific, uh, dealing more in subtleties, but more on a comp level of compassion, is to reach out for these children. And I say children because they're real young that are getting into this. Yeah. And it's not just the drugs, it's the general apathy in the country with kids where I don't care and you know I don't care what do I have to live for and that's what we have to steer them away from and it really takes uh, a situation the government isn't going to bail us all out of this problem it's down to the neighborhood the family it's what you teach in your home values and how your neighborhood reacts to a situation like that and if you have a situation then everybody get together and work it out and 
and awareness and education will triumph. I admire yeah. your ability to put in a song. Mm -hmm. Well, you have a couple of small kids. So yeah, you know sure, everybody's concerned about, about anybody it. Anybody that has children or knows children, or if you're an aunt or uncle, I mean, this is a problem, and uh, along with a lot, we can, we can fix them. We can fix any problem that we have in this country. It's a great country. We're going to survive. Mm -hmm. The human race will survive. Everything will be fine, but we have to constantly work at it. Well, yeah. now, you know kids hate to be preached to. Yeah. How do you do this in your song without looking like you know you're oh, an know. adult that's telling the them. tough part you don't want to get on the on the soapbox and whenever you say don't do this of course what are they going to do they're going to mm -hmm. do that uh educating kids really at a, at a young age and trying all you can do is you can give them values in the home and when they're leaving that your house you pray to god everything works out everything you've taught them but sure. to listen to your children and love them Listen to them. Mm -hmm. They're human beings. They're they're little adults almost, and you have to just sort you of, have to read through them a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you, know? you know. I mean, you've sure. got young ones, and, and it, it's tough. Oh, I know and what it no is. No guarantees. We can just try. Right. Have, have you always been this philosophical? You really are, no. and it's good. I wrote all this down in the back room. No, you didn't. <laughs> and he's memorizing it. No, no. I think it's very. Well, interesting. you know, a lot of people have termed uh, the Desert Rose Band as the band of the '90s. Oh, so yeah. uh, I know you guys are entering into this new decade. I mean, just full of vigor and a lot of great music, and you've got mm -hmm. a good group together. You really do. Oh, I'm real happy. This is the best band I've ever been in, as mm -hmm. far as people and uh, professionalism, and uh, we're just. We're lucky. We're glad to be doing this, and we don't really take it for granted. We work real hard. Yeah, that that hard. is nice to hear. We're glad you're doing it's it, too. It's a pleasure to be able to do The it. new uh, new album from the Desert Rose Band. If you get a chance to pick it up, you'll enjoy the music. And Chris, uh, good luck with the birds and the Desert Rose Band. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Respects. My you're pleasure. Back. we got to go, Chris. folks. We'll see you tomorrow. Come on. Bye.